In this lesson of Lair Villanova, we are going to talk about relationships. But before we can get on to relationships, we have to create some stuff that can have relationships. So I actually did this behind the scenes just to speed this up so we can stay focused on Nova. So we have a reply class and a thread class, and then we added a few relationships um, to our thread and our reply. So our reply has an owner, and our thread has many replies. It also has an owner and has the ability to add a reply, which technically Nova won't even be using. So now that we have that set up, we actually need to create our Nova resources. So we're going to do that right now. And we're just going to say PHP Artisan Nova resource reply. And then we're going to create another Nova resource called thread. Now, within our thread, let's start there. Notice we already have a user resource. So what do we really need to add? Well, if we go to our migrations with our threads, we have a title and a body. And then we want to add a relationship to our user. But first, let's just add our title. And we'll do this by going to our thread resource and then adding a text field and making our title. After that, we're going to import this tricks field, which is actually a what you see is what you get text editor. And with that, we're going to create our body. All right. Now let's go to our reply. And let's scroll up to our fields for our reply resource. And let's go to our create replies table, see what we got going. And it looks like it's just a body, but then there's going to be a thread ID and a user ID, aka it, re it belongs to a thread and it belongs to a user. So let's go to our Nova reply resource. And let's just say what you see is what you get again using tricks. And then we'll just make the body. All right. So now let's go, let's reload our page, our Nova dashboard, and make sure we have those resources set up properly. As you can see, replies and threads were properly added. As you can also see, I've already added dummy data to the database for both our threads and our replies. So we've already got threads and replies. So let's view our thread and just a random thread. And as you can see, it has an ID, has a title, and if we show the content, it has some dummy content. That's pretty cool, but wouldn't we want to show all of our threads for, or all of our replies for a thread? Well, that's pretty easy in Nova. Check this out. Since we already set up the ability, or the more specifically, the relationship for replies, a thread has many replies, and I have already created dummy data, so each thread has replies in the database, we can just go back here and we can import this has many relationship. Has many, and then we're going to make, and it's going to be replies. And then we're going to point that to the Nova reply resource. And right after that, we're going to say, da, 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 the replies method on the Nova reply resource. And now if we reload our page, check this out. We actually get all of our replies. How cool is that? So this is all of our replies for this thread. So notice that it's only two pages and it's saying there are 10 results total showing the ID for each of the replies. Right now we're on thread 50. But if we were to go to thread one, for example, notice how the replies for the ID change. Or the IDs for all of the replies change. Now on thread one, the, we get replies one through 10. So we're only, th we're only showing the given replies for the current thread we are showing. And if we want to click through and show the replies, we can actually see the content of the replies, which is just a dummy content. 
So that's pretty cool right there. So that is the has many relationship. When a resource has many of something, it will show the many that it has on the show page or detail page for that resource. In this case, a thread has many replies. And as long as we show the thread details, we will see all of the replies for the thread. Pretty cool. Next, if we go back to our thread, and then we go back to our thread model, you can also see that thread has an owner. The thread belongs to a user class. And we're using owner as the reference. So let's go back to our thread, and let's just simply say, okay, belongs to, import that from our Nova fields, and then we're gonna say make owner, and this is gonna reference the user method, and it's going to reference the user Nova resource, just like that. So now, if we wanna reload our page, App thread user. Oh, we need to go owner method, my bad. And now if we reload our page, ta-da, there we go. And so now we have our ID, we have our title, we have the body, we have all the replies, because the thread has many replies, we have an entire table for searching, filtering, uh, you know, the resourceful index table for our replies. And then we also show the owner who created the thread. And we can click through to the owner, and now we have the entire user details. Now, while we're there, let's try this out. Let's go to our user resource. Let's scroll down here, and let's import our has many. We're gonna say make, and then posts but it's actually gonna reference the threads method and the thread Nova resource. Now, because our user, oop, I guess they don't. Because our user has many threads, and we can prove that, or I guess define that using the eloquent model user, we can say return, and then this has many, and then thread class just like that and then on our thread our thread has an owner it belongs to a user so now that our eloquent relationships are set up and by the way quick note um, I am using a mix of Laravel Spark and Laravel Nova so right here it says extend Spark user but if you click through to Spark is actually authenticatable which if you click keep clicking through it's just like all these other models that extend eloquent so user is eloquent even though it says it's extending Spark user. Okay, so now that we have that relationship set up, let's go to our user. And again, remember, we're saying, okay, make the title posts and reference the threads method on the user class using the app Nova thread to set up basically an entire table right here referencing all the threads that this user has created. And we do that, and ta-da! So now, this thread right here is under the posts. So the user can make more threads, and as the user makes threads, we will see all of the threads created by this user. Now more than that, and it's going to have the name of posts. Now, actually, let's rename that from posts back to threads just to keep that simple. More than that, we can say the user has many replies, and it's going to show two tables now, a replies table and a threads table. And so if we go back to reply, we can see that, hey, the reply has an owner, and on the user, we actually have to say, okay, public function replies. We want to return this has many and then reply class. Now, if we reload the page one more time, instead of just having a single has many table, we'll get both. We'll have a posts table and a replies table.
And how cool is that? And so it looks like this user has not made a reply yet. So if we wanted to create a reply, we could. Um, but the big thing with the reply, and I don't have this set up right, is a reply would also need to, where is it at? Um, here, let's go to our replies table again. Create replies table. And the reply has a user ID, but also a thread ID. So on our thread class, or on our reply class, let's add the thread the given user, or the given reply is for. So the owner of this reply is going to make the given reply on the following thread. So it's going to belong to a thread class, just like that. And so now, if we go back to our reply, we can say, okay, bring in this belongs to, make, and then we're gonna say owner, which is actually gonna reference the owner method on the app Nova resource model. Then we're going to say the reply also belongs to the thread, which is going to reference the thread and the app Nova thread resource. And that needs to be user up there. Just like that. And then on our user, we have many replies. And on our thread, we have many replies and belongs to a given user. So let's see if that worked. So now when we reload this page, sweet. So now before we can actually add the given reply, we have to say, okay, we're replying to which thread. And what we can actually do is just like we can change the title when we're searching well, that's what we're doing right there in that drop down. So we're searching. So what we can do is we can say, well, instead of returning the ID, let's return the title of each thread. And what does that do? Well, check this. Now we're replying to a specific thread instead of replying to a random ID. Now we have the title to the thread. Then we can just say, cool reply. Um, to the thread of air cus sit dolorum uh, repellendus. That actually sounds like a magic spell or something. And then I'm just going to like bold out the cool reply, make it a little italic, maybe give it a quote, and do all this other cool stuff <laughs> that Nova just lets you do that dang quickly. And now I'm going to say create reply. And la la. Now I can go to that thread. And on the thread page, you'll see all these replies. And then I can say, cool reply, right? But nothing matches. So what we can actually do is within the search, we can now add body. We can add title. We can add owner. And we can add replies. And then within reply, we can add body, owner, thread. Just like that. And actually, sorry, we cannot do relationships. My bad. You can, but we're not going to cover that in this video. Um, so we just want body and title, and we want to remove the relationships from the search, uh, the columns that should be searched. We're going to go up here. We're going to reload that page. And we're going to say, cool reply. Oh, I guess we already got it. So if we don't look up cool reply then we get all of our replies but if we look up that specific text that I had remember we started that with cool reply we'll actually get the specific reply that I created and there we go and it's going to show us the threads who created it this is the user detail who created it the threads and then the given replies And that is Laravel Nova relationships. Now there is one other thing I want to show you guys. We did not cover all of the possible relationships. This was just the belong to and the belongs to relationship and the has many relationship. 
um, all of the relationships available. And there's, you can also do like the has one, belongs to, um, but belongs to many, morph one, morph many, morph two, morph to many searchable relationships, creating in nine relationships. So there are a ton of relationships types you can add, and they pretty much do. Um, I guess they do very different things, but we might cover these more in depth. We might not. I want to kind of keep this project specific and not too, go too offline of what we're trying to do with this project. So within cleancode.studio, I'm actually creating um, threads on the front end right now. And these threads are able to be viewed, replied to, et cetera, et cetera. And so within that, I want to create a, um, be able to track all the user actions. And so within here, we'll have, oop, wrong one. Uh, well, I guess I might be on the wrong branch right now, but eventually within the user's profile, um, I want to give them like a default profile page and it's going to have actions that that user has actually done. So what posts they've liked, which ones they've replied to, et cetera, et cetera. And then they're only able to interact with threads and posts based on their given role. So maybe we'll add like uh, a few of these relationships if we add like tags to those threads or if we need to add roles and permissions more so than are what are than what I already have added. Um, but as cleancode.studio needs those, we may add more relationship type fields, but we also might not. So I wanted you guys to be aware of that. Um, so yeah, guys, that is relationships in Laravel Nova. Simple.